Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had a good break. Uh, looking forward to our next conversation uh, with the uh, Department of Navy SBIR program. And although the Navy's SBIR and SDR programs are a component of the overall Department of Defense SBIR, STTR program, the Navy's program is targeted at addressing needs and in, in areas of interest to the Navy and Systems Command focus on feeding both the military and private sectors of the nation. It's a great honor uh, this morning to introduce you to Robert Smith. And uh, Bob is Director, Department of the Navy, SBIR, STTR Program, and Special Programs Office of Naval Research. He uh, is liaison and conducts high-level communication with admirals, generals, and senior execs within the Department of Defense federal agencies and other state and local agencies, uh, as well as industry large prime contractors and small businesses. In addition to that, he maintains constant high level communication with various congressional committees, as well as elected officials in both the House and the Senate. And his responsibility among many, by the way, is to recommend policy initiation and implementation of changes with the goal of increasing small business participation in the department of Navy's research programs. So, Bob, it's a great honor and, and proud to introduce you and welcome. We'll hand the baton over to you. And you may be on okay. mute. There we go. Now we're cooking. Okay. Can you hear me on this line? Yes, we can, Bob. Okay. Well, uh, Martin, uh, thank you for having the, the Navy participate. Thanks to the Riverside team for your, your virtual conference. Uh, if anyone says this is as much fun as it being in person, I really, really need to talk to their, 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 uh, to their doctor to find out what the great uh, miracle uh, they're on, or at least their, uh, which bar they go to. Uh, so with that being said, I believe you've got the slides. Uh, we'll go for that. Uh, uh, you're allowing questions as we go along, correct? Bob, whatever your preferences is, I can I can interject uh, or interrupt you if it's okay with Q and A, or we can wait until the end of your presentation. Whatever works best for you. Typically, we wait until the tail end, but it, it's yeah, entirely up to you. Okay. Well, and we'll wait to the tail end unless something really comes up and uh, you, you see uh, someone needing you know, edification on a slide and go from that. For the most part. Uh, Get your questions ready, uh, put them into the system so we can get to them at the end. Uh, I'd also like to preface, if you don't get a chance uh, to get your question answered today, or you think of a question later, uh, uh, the quick plug for NavySBIR.com is our website. Uh, please visit us there, and uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions. Um, and uh, which one of us has got the slides? Um, Bob, were you going to share your screen with the slides? Um, I don't have the brief on this computer, so if you can do it for me, uh, maybe we'll go that way, Kathy. So while we're waiting and working through the slides, some general overall thoughts. So Navy is just one of uh, 13 agencies, um, compartments within the Department of Defense. And the Department of Defense is only one of uh, many, many agencies within the federal government that participate in the SBIR program. Uh, many of you may or may not know that SBIR is a 3% assessment, 3.2% assessment of the overall federal R&D program uh, for its extramural research. So if you want to back into 3.2% of the Navy's extramural R&D, you'll find that our $450 million program is about 1.4% of the total Navy's R&D program. So Bob, what we're waiting for, Hannon, is the uh, I, I, now you, the DON, you are contract, right? Or are, are you contract and grants? No, we are, uh, for SBIR, we are contracts only in the Department of Navy. Uh, the Office of Naval Research, who handles all applied 
uh, basic research and advanced technology research uh, do uh, issue grants, uh, but that's through the non SBIR funding. Uh, what it's getting to is not all of R&D is SBIR. So uh, in many cases, you'll find a PM that uh, uh, has money, uh, is interested in your work. It may say uh, issue you a grant through the O&R process, Office of Naval Research, or it might be a program office out there that uh, will solicit uh, uh, through a, an open solicitation and uh, you know, proposals and selections, and you could easily see yourself with a contract outside the SBR program. Mm -hmm. But uh, the primary door for a small business to make it into the Navy, especially if there are folks working on research, solving tough technical challenges, or have novel approaches to our technical problems, and they have novel approaches to solving those problems, it's going to be the SBR program. It's a great place for both you and I to start building that relationship. Because our phase ones will be up to $225,000. Okay. Phase one is to produce, uh, produce proof of concept. If we get some more money, we think we can use this research approach to solving this technical challenge. Okay. And what can that technical challenge be? Uh, in the Navy, everything from boots to boats, dolphins to, I like to use donuts, but I get in trouble for that one, uh, but something with a D. We do it all. You know, we, we only have these little things called a carrier, which is a floating city that has every element of a city, and we need to take care of those farms. Uh, airplane ships, submarines, uh, marines, sailors, uh, drones, unmanned wa uh, surface vehicles, unmanned air vehicles, uh, cyber. It's all there in the Navy. And I also like to say there's high propensity between what the Navy's doing and its applicability to the Air Force. Because last time I checked, uh, most jets have a lot of things in common. Uh, just happens that ours like to be around a lot of salt water. Uh, so you'll probably find that as the primary uh, differentiator between a Navy jet uh, and an Air Force jet. Um, on from phase one, 225K. We like what you're doing. We uh, love the approach, the, the proof of concept. Uh, if all goes well, you're going to get awarded a phase two, up to $1.6 million for the first phase two. What are we looking for at the end there? Is a prototype. It's going to have a base and an option, and we're going to progress that technology and hopefully to a prototype. Uh, what kind of prototype will depend on, on the challenge of the technology, what you produce, what we expected, what we agreed on in the contract. Um, and we may not solve the problem on that first go. We need to do a tweak. Maybe something came up. Maybe that technical approach needs to veer a little to the right or a little to the left. Uh, to get to the ultimate state, or because it's research, we each had an epiphany, and guess what? There's another application. Uh, so there can be a subsequent phase two. Uh, and if we have the slides up, we can go into that. So what happens after phase two? Uh, hopefully, you make it to phase three, commercialization. In the Navy parlance, that's transition, because we want your technology. Uh, we picked you because we have a problem. And we already have an idea if this works, where it's going to go, went to our acquisition program. Uh, at that point, we hope they start spending some of their non SBR dollars to continue to develop. Uh, and then eventually, uh, it's insertion into a platform, a program, a component, the system used by the Naval War Fighter. Okay. Uh, we always focus on solving the Navy's problems. If your technology has dual use capability and it can be factored out there into industry, go for it. Uh, we want you to be truly successful. Uh, we first want you as a Navy partner, but we want you to be successful uh, and go for it. And many uh, Navy companies uh, do start off focusing on the Navy and find that there's a dual use capability and they go from that. Uh, one tiny example would be iRobot. Uh, who spun out the division that still works with the Navy, but their primary division back in the old days was building robots in, in support of uh, our EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal folks, okay? Guess what, they're making a whole lot more money on vacuum cleaners, uh, and the spun out division is still working on uh, EOD capabilities for us. So that's a phase three. Uh, 
we talked about uh, all the different needs we have. Those come out via topics. Uh, a topic is our demand signal for your proposals to solve our technical problems. Uh, uh, upcoming BAA uh, being released here soon, I want to say in November, with 21.1, we'll have uh, about 120 topics kicking off the FY21 process. Uh, so there's probably a good chance that what you're working on, what your research trade space is, where you focus, where your expertise is, uh, I got a feeling there might be some alignment with what the Navy is looking for. How can you determine, or do you have to wait for that uh, BAA to hit the street? I would say now back to my website. Remember, NavySBIR.com? There's a link there for another website. Actually, thank you. Good. Navy Cyber Search.com, N A V Y S B I R Search.com, where you can put in keywords related to your technology and what you're working on, and you can see if there's ever been a topic or topics related to that technology. And you can see where the Navy is progressing with its uh, research and its capabilities and its technical solutions. Uh, it's a great way to go. I bet there might be a topic related to that in the next solicitation. So you can be ready and prime for it when it hits the street. Um, I often like to ask folks, if you've seen a topic related to your technology over the last three to five years in our solicitations, and all of a sudden you don't see it in the next one, what happened? There's really only two answers to that. I either solved the technical challenge, I don't need any more SBR money to fix it, or it's no longer a high enough priority to be funded by SDR. Because we have a list from one to N on our challenges and not everything gets addressed. Uh, because there's never going to be enough money in the SBR program or the Navy's research program to solve every problem uh, we'd like to solve to keep our shares and Marines safe. Um, and I, if we ever find the slides, uh, we'll go from that, but I don't know if we would like to open it for questions or go from there. Well, I can, I can certainly ask a few. And um, sure. how many BAAs do we get a year from, from you? You mentioned 21.1 .1 is on its way. Is, that, is it twice a year, three times? Uh, the Navy participates in three solicitations a year from DOD. And, it, and our solicitation, I call it our solicitation, we're always part of OSD, Department of Defense's BAAs, and they have three of them a year. Uh, we're always in those scheduled uh, solicitations. We also sometimes do what we call out of cycle uh, BAAs. Uh, something critical uh, comes up and we need, we can't wait for the next cycle. We need to start working on that problem right now. And so in case last year, we had an out of cycle BAA. Kind of interesting, the 20.4 BAA got issued before the 20.3 BAA got issued simply because of the kind of nomenclature for the, how the BAAs are, uh, are lined up and structured to go. Uh, so three times a year, the biggest one is always going to be the dot one slash A because that sort of aligns with the federal budget process. Uh, uh, but there's the dot two slash B. And uh, the number is for SBIR, the letter is for STTR. Uh, and normally in the 20.3, it's only SBIR for the Navy. Uh, uh, and they have to look. So you've got uh, OSD BAAs. Uh, and normally in each of those primary uh, announcements, you'll have all of the uh, services, the sister services in the defense agencies. Uh, a couple of them are always having, uh, especially in COVID, out of cycle BAAs. Uh, and of course, our calendars don't align with the other federal agencies involved. So you really have to look at their websites or at SBA to see the different uh, calendars and when things are coming out. Uh, there are three elements to the BAA that's really important. There's the pre-release period, the open period, and it's closed. Pre-release is normally 30 days where you can contact that technical point of contact and have a conversation and get your questions answered without anyone else knowing what your question was or what the answer was. Uh, I like to uh, ask people, 
uh, well, I won't even ask the question. I'll just put it this way. If you don't use the pre-release period, and if you don't get selected, and you call me and say, I didn't get selected, I have zero sympathy for you because you wasted 30 days where you could have talked to the customer to make sure what you read is what they hoped they had written. Uh, we're talking scientists and engineers, and God bless them. They do better than I, the accountants of the world, uh, in using the English language. So find out what they're really looking for. That will only strengthen your proposal. Uh, so use the pre-release period. After that, there's the open period, where you can still ask questions, but we will post those, those, that question and those answers on the website for all to see. So that's the perfect time to make sure your intellectual property is released to everybody. No, don't do that. Okay. I'm just saying use the pre-release. Uh, during the open period might be a good time for a technical question related to the instructions in the BAA, Broad Agency Announcement. Okay. And oh, by the way, read the BAA instructions and follow them. Um, if we say it needs to be 10 pitch font, and if we say you get 20 pages, if you don't use 10 pitch font, and if you don't keep your proposal within 20 pages, you're going to be considered non-compliant, and you'll be kicked out and not evaluated. And that seems draconian. That seems bureaucratic. And I agree with you. But when I have a thousand companies do it correctly, and you didn't, it's not fair to them to let you proceed. So please follow the instructions. The Navy instructions are going to be different than the Air Force, different than the Army. We have the broad uh, instructions we all follow, but then we get into specifics of what makes us different. Uh, and you can be frustrated that the Navy and the Army and the Air Force and the agencies are all slightly different. But I also like to point out to you that how many of you have brothers and sisters? And if you do, please stand up if you're exactly the same like your brother and sister. Okay. We're all different. We have different missions. Uh, we have different focuses. We have different organizational structures which create those differences in how we do our business. Bob Doton had a question, um, wanted a little bit further clarification on the budget stages, phase one, two, and three, respectively. Um, he, he wasn't able to hear it clearly. Wondered if you could maybe expound or elaborate on, on that, if you could, please. Okay. So there's three different uh, 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 Phases of SBR, phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one is the proof of concept. In the Navy, we go up to $225,000 for our phase one, normally about 12 months worth of work. Uh, sometimes if you see the BAA, you will say it'll be a, a smaller amount of money, but it'll also be a, normally a shortened amount of, I think there's the slides, of, uh, of uh, research time to do it. Uh, phase two, up to $1.6 million. You uh, can go for that. So if we've got the slides, why don't I go through them quickly? Um, so there I am. Please, on my email, if you want to contact me, that's robert.l.smith6. Uh, uh, it just tells you there's a lot of Robert Smiths, and there's actually an incredible number of Robert L. Smiths in the Navy. Uh, the six is important because if you don't add the six, you're actually talking to a lawyer in a different command. Okay. Uh, we trade emails because people don't use our six. Okay, next slide. Uh, big picture. So I think so. We publicized the needs. You've heard about, about the broad agency announcement. You saw that, uh, heard about the topics. Okay. Uh, we get your proposals. Please follow the instructions. Please do not wait to the last minute to submit your proposal. Because one of the things that are in the instructions are this is web-based, and if the web goes down, it's not our fault. You're just out of luck. The number of times the companies have called me and said, we spent weeks, months, putting our proposal together, and the power went out at my house, or the website went down, and we didn't get in. Please take it. And I, all I can say is, I'm so, so very sorry. Okay? So don't wait until the last minute. Everybody does that. We do an evaluation, we'll get it in a second, and an award is made, okay? 
Uh, a lot of times going on there. And we're talking about how we're trying to shrink that timeline. We don't want to shrink the amount of time for research. We want to shrink the amount of time for, for the business side of getting to a topic to an award. Next slide. We talked about everybody. Okay, there you see at the top the large agencies. Uh, Small Business Administration administers the SBR program on behalf of the federal government. You see all the agencies involved there. Uh, you see the Navy within the OSD uh, agencies and services. And then you see the eight commands within the Navy that participate. Uh, and each one of them has a different focus from airplanes to boots, uh, to boats, to uh, dolphins. Next slide. We talked phase one, phase two, phase three. We'll spend a few seconds here. So normally you see 170 topics, give or take a year. You just heard me say we're going to have 120 topics in the 21.1 solicitation. Okay, so that tells you where the preponderance of our topics for FY21 are going to come from. Okay, we normally will get 2,200-ish proposals, and we'll make 450 awards. Okay, you can do the math and see what your odds are there. Okay. Uh, Normally about one to 15 is the chance. Phase two, tech development, build and, and, and do a prototype. Hopefully build and test the prototype. But uh, half as many phase twos as phase ones. Part of that, remember, is it's $1.6 million effort, give or take. And phase three, hopefully uh, someone likes what you've done, you've delivered as promised, and it solves the problem. We got to tweak a little more. We've got to get across the finish line. That's where phase three dollars come in. And you can see there on an annual basis, the Navy will have about five hundred million dollars in phase three awards. Okay, not that same phase one company you see there, because it takes three to five years before your phase two is ready for commercialization. That's time to get the research done, time to solve those technical challenges in time to grow your two-person garage company into 2,200 people. We always want to keep you below 500 in the SBR program. But after that, you go off and become a big Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, uh, Bell of Bowman. Okay, next slide. Won't belittle that anymore. Uh, we do it all. But I'll also say without an answer the question, the Army has the largest Navy in the world if you just count vessels. The US Navy has the most number of combatants, i.e. ships with guns on them. Okay, next slide. A little about the Navy. Uh, we talked about that, small businesses, uh, instructions in the BAA. Topics range from narrow to broad, okay. Um, one thing that I, we all take pride in, in the Navy is our topics are, are are strongly aligned to our acquisition program. They are narrow. I know what my problem is in my aircraft, my ship, my submarine, uh, my weapon system called the Marine. I know what that challenge is. I know what we're working on. To broad, we're open to any and all suggestions of what might solve cybersecurity, uh, corrosion, uh, maintenance issues. Uh, I can say the more narrow the topic, the easier it is to get to phase three because we've already determined if it works, where is it going to go and when it's going to go there. If it's a broader topic, it's a little tougher both you and for I, I being Navy, to understand where it's going to commercialize. Uh, but it's well, how we can have that conversation on what is the art of the possible. You know, as good as the Navy is, and we're pretty good. We don't have all the answers. We haven't thought of every way we might solve problems. Uh, we might even know that problem's coming at us, okay? But you do, okay? We evaluate, select, and award, hopefully in four months. We talked about the money. Uh, oh, I was wrong, it's $240,000, okay? Next slide, okay? Plan, prepare, participate. How do you plan, okay? Well, get everybody ready. First, you gotta participate. There's your eligibility. Uh, research the topics, we talked about that. Is the Navy a good partner? Uh, we don't do a lot of space in the Navy. We do a little bit, but if you're really someone that's working space, you're looking at NASA or maybe the Air Force. So find where your best partnership is, okay? We understand the BAAs. 
We have templates. They're on our website. So you can look at them now. So it makes it easier to fill out and everything. Okay. And submit the proposal uh, that meets the topic. I, uh, you can have a great technology. But if you come to me with that and say, here's my bright and shiny, I'm going to go, thank you very much. But what I'd rather you do is do some homework and go, here is something I think will solve your problem. And we're going to have a better, more rich conversation at that point. Next slide. Uh, we talked about the BAAs. Here are the current ones. We're just about to, uh, well, a month from now, open up uh, the 21.1. Okay. We're always looking for those solutions for the war fighters. Uh, next slide. Was it successful? You did what you said you were going to do. Okay. You continue to have dialogue with your technical point of contact, especially, uh, well, all the way along the way, because if something happens, it's research. Maybe we need to modify our approach. Let's work together on this. Bad news doesn't get better with time. Let's work through it. Okay. Next slide. Okay. Who evaluates it? Uh, it's going to be government people. In the Navy, we use government people, one, to write the topic, and two, to do the evaluation of that topic. It's usually going to be the technical point of contact and one to two other people looking at it from a technical perspective as a primary uh, selection criteria. There's only three criteria within an SBR selection. Technical approach, technical team. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. Someone wants to know, what makes a great technical team? Do I have to have a Navy person on this? No. I want folks that have technical competence to solve this problem. Uh, so if you're working in microelectronics, I really hope you don't uh, build a gigantic team full of business majors. Okay. You may want one or two of those doing the back room stuff running the business. But I want really, really smart people on the bench doing the research. Okay. Uh, and then you see 30, 50% of phase ones make it to phase two, all depending on the budget and money and the progress you're making along the way. Next slide. In phase one, phase two, we talked to reports. We talked about communicating with folks, staying engaged with your technical point of contact. Uh, once again, keeping that personal relationship going. Okay, and building that personal relationship. So at the end of the day is, did I do good research and did I validate I'm a good partner? And you know, that's as much on the Navy as it is on you, uh, but that's part of part of this uh, process in phase one, phase two. Next slide. We talked about phase two, there's your initial phase two, sequential phase two. We said we need to, we, we like the progress, we deliver it where we're at, but we ran into some problems. We need to fix those before we take another next step. So maybe we're just going to award a, sec, a sequential phase two. Or maybe I solved their problem, but now I have applicability to someone else, so it could be a, a subsequent phase two. That's phase two types. Next slide. And if I'm going too fast, uh, Martin, I hope you slow me down. Okay, phase three. You're doing great, Bob. Uh, Thanks. Okay, the primary metric of success in this rare program is phase three dollars. Uh, I can measure that. It gets very difficult to measure how a $1.6 million solution that went into a decision support system, that went into the combat system, that went into the combat operations center on an aircraft carrier that only cost $5 billion. It's hard to say how much that improved warfighting capability, but we know it did. Um, but we do know that the carrier uh, acquisition community just spent 10 million, 20 million, 30 million dollars because they liked your solution. Okay. Or if you're a builder of, of uh, missiles, you just got that $350 million contract. I just want to find your speed on that one. Okay. Ultimate goal uh, competitively. We'll get into that. Uh, it, it's just new, so you know. So if someone else can bring money to the table, but if I still have SBR dollars in that, it's considered an SBR phase two, not a, a, a sole SBR phase three. Key uh, document that you should have, uh, probably not at your phase one. Just get that phase one. Focus on getting that done. 
But after that, I'd say you definitely need to download and read the phase three guidebook we have because it has all of the primary essential references and documents that talk about how other folks within the acquisition community can use the authorities within the SBR program to give you a sole source contract. That's a phase three. Okay, next slide. Okay. Uh, we went there before. We talked about the topics, talked about how it's aligned acquisition. I also say the Navy started a new initiative last year. We're, we're doing more focus on maintenance and sustainment of our systems. Uh, so it's not just getting the next bright and shiny aircrafts out there. When I have aircraft flying today that have been in the fleet for over 20 years, I have to maintain those. I need to upgrade those. Uh, so it, uh, that's how it works. We talked about acquisition. Next slide. The Navy is unique uh, in all of, all of the DOD agencies and services. We have a program called STP, uh, which is actually a, a, a missed acronym of SBIR STTR Transition Program. So every phase two awardee in the Navy is offered participation in STP. And you can see here the things we offer in STP. Uh, so while you're doing that research in your phase two, hopefully you or someone on your team has enough time to work on some of the business aspects, uh, educating you on the program, other ways to uh, use the system and networking. Okay. Uh, next slide. Why does it matter? Because companies participate in the STP program have a 20% higher rate of phase three uh, transition. Uh, don't take this personal. Uh, you're probably a fantastic technologist, scientist, and engineer. And every once in a while, one of you is a great business person. And once in a while, one of you is a great legal mind. And every once in a while, one of you uh, has a contracting background and has got that covered. But that's maybe one in 10,000 companies to where one person can do all that and they don't like sleeping at night. Okay, so this helps you think about all the things you haven't thought about. So when you have a successful phase two, you're ready to transition to phase three and you're ready to deliver at scale. Okay, uh, true story. Uh, a young man had a successful phase two. He's sitting down with the TPOC uh, in front of him. TPOC is raving on his technology, how good it is. He goes, uh, we want to sign, sign that phase three contract. We need you to deliver 100 of those by uh, the end of the uh, fall, and we need 1,000 by the end of the year. And that young entrepreneur just kind of lowered their head, uh, broke eye contact. And he sort of looked up and said, you don't understand. Mom doesn't sew that fast. Wait a second. I got the technology. You can't deliver at scale. We no longer have a relationship. So these are sort of the things you can work through. Do I need to build a manufacturing facility? Or do I need to send my stickers to my subcontractor who will produce for me? Maybe it's time for me to hand it off to one of the products. And they can deliver at scale. And I can move on to my next uh, challenge. Something to think about. Next slide. Phase three. I kind of want to stay here for a while because uh, I can rightly, proudly say the Navy knows how to do it better than anyone else in DOD and I dare say in the federal government. Okay, I pat myself on the back and up. Next slide. Uh, what is success? Please go to our website, NavySBR.com. Success stories. You can see how companies have gone from their SBR effort into phase three and transition. And different technologies, different companies. Each one of those is a one-up story of perseverance and persistence, uh, of epiphanies, of blind luck, and uh, how they got there. Okay, uh, Pretty exciting stuff to see how, how all moved out. Next slide. 
some websites. Okay, if you didn't catch this one early on, here it is again. Okay, it's got all the information on the BAAs. It talks about how the Navy does things. And in some cases, why we do it the way we do it. Okay, next slide. We talked about NavySibersearch.com. Every award the Navy's ever made in the SBR program is there. So you can see how we progress. You can see what we're doing. Uh, we already talked about not everything we, the Navy does is in the SBR program, but a whole lot of it is at, at the early stages as we move along. Okay, we'll never have an SBR asking you to, to please deliver the next carrier. Okay, we realize it's research that can be accomplished at $1.6 million. Oh, by the way, if you promise me a carrier for $1.6 million, I don't think that's feasible. I don't think we're going to make the award. Next slide. There's the uh, DOD website for SBIR. Uh, make sure you register it and can work for that. Don't wait till the last minute to submit your proposal. Next slide. Okay. There's the SBA's website. Lots of useful information, lots of uh, training uh, things you, to help you move along. Uh, maybe hopefully answer some of those questions. Um, next slide. We talked about STP. You can learn out there. You can learn, uh, see our virtual uh, transition marketplace where we uh, we used to do this in person. We'd have a conference to where we bring that company and their technology, put them in a big conference room, invite all the Navy acquisition, and hopefully by serendipity, uh, they link up and people realize there's something I can use. Okay. Other than their original, remember, they already have a relationship with their phase two TPOC. Now this is an opportunity to see other potential customers. Okay. Now we do it personally. Uh, works pretty well. Next slide. Uh, there's a great video there uh, that we recently, recently, recently put together. Uh, it won't take that long to look at. Gets you pretty excited about the program, I hope. Um, before we get off, a lot of people will approach this going, gee, I've got to figure out how to keep the name. Yes, but it's still a two-way street. We want you to understand that the Navy is moving our program as quickly as we can on the business side of making those selections, getting those awards, okay, uh, and getting your, your money. Uh, we don't want this to be a business team game of frustration. Uh, we want it to be an opportunity to build partnerships. Okay. We need you, uh, and sometimes you've got to hit us, remind us that. Uh, we need to do our part also. Next slide. We started talking about moving at the speed of small business. Okay. You're agile. You're quick. You're innovative. Okay. Uh, we've reduced our proposal length. We've accelerated our awards. We're making the uh, payments faster for you. Okay. Functional technology. Naval and national needs. Remember, naval needs first. Uh, if it supports the nation, that's even better. But for right now, I, I need you to solve my problems. Next slide. I'll uh, stay in touch. Like I said, if you didn't get your, if you don't get your questions answered today, please visit the website. Okay, contact us on email. We'll get back to you on that. Okay, and we got Twitter and LinkedIn. Excellent. I think that's, that's the last all one. Slides. I'm sorry? That was the last slide. Thank you. Bob, thank you very much indeed. I know we have a, a little bit more time. I was wondering, Bob, if, if you don't mind, uh, you had touched on phase three if, if, um, a couple of times. And I understand you, well, you had indicated that the Department of Navy is our end customer. I think you'd indicated phase three is non SBIR STTR funding from the government or private. Is phase three, after we've completed two, two A, two B, or how, how we, however you had presented it, is this where we are now uh, securing a contract with the DON or other? 
How does that work? Or, or am I yeah. misunderstanding that, by the way? No, uh, so phase three will be non-SDR dollars um, probably be a, uh, a new contract. Uh, it's normally the way most people approach it. There is a contract mechanism called the BOA, B-O-A, uh, Basic Ordering Agreement, uh, that we are now using for some of those technologies uh, that we have a high likelihood of, of early transition or quick transition. A uh, BOA allows me to give you a task order for up to five years, so I can I can issue those task orders much quicker than going through the process of, of the new contract. Uh, writing your average contract will take 12 to 18 months. Uh, with the BOA, we can do it 30 to 60 days. Okay, uh, so it's not for every SBIR phase one. Actually, almost never for phase one. We use it at phase two, uh, usually directed on a critical technology uh, that we think is going to move forward, and we want to be ready to act quickly on that. Uh, and sometimes I hear uh, that, uh, well, slow down the contracting, you're moving faster than the research is ready. Uh, but it's non SBR dollars, usually going to be a separate contract. Uh, at that point, we definitely want to make sure your, uh, your contracting system is ready and you're ready to deliver uh, at scale. But there is no. I hope that answered the question. I, I think so, Bob. I just want to make certain there is no guarantee that just because we complete two, two A, two B, and I, I forgive me, I forget how you were described it. No guarantee that we are going to be awarded uh, therefore a contract, even though we've completed mm -hmm. phase two, right? Now, or or uh, yeah. There, uh, what you don't see is actually uh, one of the challenges is that transition, that uh, uh, that commercialization, that insertion into that program of record. So how did your small component make it into an F-22 fighter plane? Uh, did, it, did, it, did it align with the next tech insertion or block uh, upgrade or software drop scheduled for this date? Okay, Because if I miss that date, I may have to wait two, three years before the next block upgrade software drop. Uh, then what happens? Okay, is it still going to be viable technology in three years, or are the improvements to it? Um, so that's where the TPOC, that's where the program office is working to make sure all these pieces fit as required, as time as time marches on. Uh, you may have solved the problem, but because of budgets, uh, Congress either gave gave us money or took money away. Uh, I don't have the money for the transition. Uh, you may have solved the very technical problem I wanted you to solve, but that's no longer a priority for me because the enemy did something and now I have new challenges. Okay. I can guarantee 10 months ago, the Navy and the DOD and the federal government wasn't spending a lot of money on any COVID related technology solutions. Okay. We are today. Where did that money come from? Uh, what did the enemy do to make me change the way I fight wars, plan to fight wars, uh, plan to be engaged uh, across the board? But that's where the conversation keeps going because you, the business person, needs to know at the end of this phase two whether or not the Navy has a plan. Because I, the company, need to have a plan. SBIR should never be your single uh, funding stream, okay, ever, okay, uh, because waiting on the federal government is exceedingly tricky. Uh, I like to remind people, I want to say, what is it now? In the last 20 years, the federal government has only produced a budget on schedule once. That ought to scare you a little bit. Thanks, Bob. And I know who is a researcher at, at our University of California here. She had one of the Navy contracts to develop Navy Dolphin Supplement. Uh, first of all, we also, most of us do not know what that means, Navy Dolphin Supplement. So maybe you can clarify that. She said it was great fun. So that's good to know. Um, is there any more funding that may be coming for Navy Dolphin related health care? Anything coming in perhaps the near future that you know of? She'd love to know. I, I don't have a clue. Uh, you can see the progression from NavyCipperSearch.com, and you can wait to see what the next solicitation has to say. 
Uh, and I want to say it was actually uh, it was probiotics for our dolphins. Okay, and, and, uh, and that's where that uh, Navy Sipper went. I think there's well, uh, I'm not sure if they ever commercialized on that because uh, the interesting thing, great research, a lot of fun working for our dolphins. Not a big market there, right? Unless there's some way to pivot that probiotic that worked for dolphins for other pets or humans or the rest of it. Uh, that's part of thinking outside the box, thinking a little more broadly. After this, where's the next step going to be? Got it. Thanks, Bob. And from Amir. Hi, Amir. Welcome back. Um, his question pertains to mathematical modeling of combat. Interesting. Do you foresee or is there any current need for proposals relative to that mathematical modeling of combat? Um, and uh, what would be the needs uh, from your perspective, I guess, or understanding for artificial intelligence and prospectively quantum computing? And, and exactly. also for risk, risk acceptance or risk taking models, I guess, as well. Well, see, there's a quick thing. Do I, will I ever see a topic related to mathematical models for combat? Uh, I personally, first, once again, I always like to say, I don't have a clue as to what the technical community is now seeing as their challenges. I would say you probably wouldn't see anything that related, uh, but go to supersearch.com to see if there's been anything related to that. It may very well not be in the SBR program, but be something that might be being approached by the Office of Naval Research who are in charge of basic research for the Department of the Navy. Um, uh, but he touched on something. Mathematical uh, modeling uh, plays into artificial intelligence, plays into machine learning. So your algorithms, uh, or your mathematical approach to something might very well be the leading edge to this AI challenge. I see the ability to apply my knowledge of mathematical models to solving the AI. Uh, that might be the linkages more than what's the question. So sometimes you need to, it may not, it may not be you need to have your question answered. It may be you need to modify your question uh, and, and then the, the horizons will, will open up. Sure. Yeah, thanks for that. Actually, Amir's question reminds me of another of a client of ours of, of Epic. It's been a couple of years, but there was no uh, uh, solicitation in any BAA for his particular technology or solution. So what he had done, and, and it took him about a year, but he started what I call affectionately as a pollination process, Bob, which means start talking and discovery and so forth. Down at Pendleton, down at Naval Balboa, back east where you're located and so forth. And lo and behold, in about a year, it showed up. And uh, fortunately for him, he was also awarded. And I wondered if if that is acceptable, is that uh, embraced where perhaps we may reach out to you, Bob, for example, and say, I've got an idea. I know it's not showing up in the BAA, but uh, would it be a good idea for me to just start pollinating and exploring to see if maybe this may ultimately end up uh, being requested in an RFP? Does that happen a lot? Uh, I don't have a metric for how often that happens, but having conversations always begets further conversations and, and uh, future research. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why going back to the BAA, you can look at the previous topics or something that might align to previous topics. And uh, there, there's two bits of information with every awarded contract that's on our website. The contact information for that technical point of contact. And let's say they're at advanced materials. You can reach out to them and talk about the field of advanced materials or AI and machine learning. Where are they at? What's the state of the technology? What's the state of play? Maybe we've got something. Maybe you can help help, help me understand that the, uh, the industry has moved along and I need a new topic that would address these opportunities. Uh, I like to say every subject matter expert in the Navy is the leading subject matter expert in the Navy. That is not true. Okay, 
how do they learn, especially now that we're all ensconced into our individual houses, how do they learn about the state of the technology, have that conversation? The other bit of information is you get the company's point of contact related to who won that contract. You can reach out to them. Uh, you can ask them, how is it working with the Navy? I'll never do that again. Worst experience in my life. Oh, my God. Okay. Or they could say, best thing that's ever happened. We learned so much. I have a great relationship with our TPOC. We're heading off to our phase two. Uh, there's another topic coming out in the next solicitation based upon what we did. Uh, things are great, uh, and they're a great partner. Uh, but we had a fantastic phase two, but we ran into this technical challenge and couldn't go any further. Oh, really? Got it. What was your technical challenge? Uh, you'd be amazed at how many times the teams addressing a challenge or two or more small businesses together working on that challenge. Great. Bob, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I think I'm starting to get an electronic shock from Misty to make a transition into Naval X. <laughs> there are three additional questions, Bob, from Amir, from Pamela, and from Arash. Uh, would it be okay if we maybe connected them with you so they could ask their questions? A couple of them, um, or actually <laughs> all of them, have ideas uh, for transformative innovations, but uh, might not be a bad idea for them to maybe connect and pollinate with you and, and, and get your take and guidance on that. Would that okay. would that be okay if we uh, guided them towards you? Yeah, and I would always preface it. Have you visit before you come talking to me? Have you spent yep. some time at our website? Because most of the answers are already resident right there. Advice well taken and much appreciated. Bob, 